News breaking overnight. Donald Trump has attacked the judge in his criminal hush money case, Juan Marchand, once again, calling for him to be, quote, sanctioned and recused. Comes after a week of withering attacks from the ex president targeting both Judge Mershon and his daughter, a private citizen. This week, we'll likely learn whether the judge will expand his partial gag order against Trump after Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg asked Mershon to clarify whether the gag order applies to family members. Let's start this hour with MSNBC political analyst and Bloomberg senior executive opinion editor Tim O'Brien, also joining us, former federal prosecutor and MSNBC legal analyst Christy Greenberg. Good morning to you both. Good morning, guys. Um, uh Look, I think what was most concerning for me in the most recent posts from uh, Donald Trump is that the post that we, and we obviously didn't put this up on the screen, but the post that we showed, he also included pictures of the judge's daughter there. And the question that I had is why? Why would he include the photos of his daughter? Why, why does Donald Trump continuously attack the judge? And it... it Perhaps it just boils down to that he is trying to intimidate them, intimidate the judge, intimidate the court and the legal system. Um, but that's just my theory. Christy, what say you? Well, this is the Donald Trump playbook, right? It's a war on women, and in particular, he attacks the female relatives of the judges. We know, we saw him do this with Judge Angoran, uh, Judge Angoran's wife. He also attacked her as a Trump-hating, uh, Trump-hating person, and that that somehow showed that this judge was also compromised. Um, and what is the goal here? I think his goal really is, you know, to intimidate uh, witnesses, because when they see that this is what happens when you testify, they're going to be less likely to testify against him. This is to taint the jury pool so that they view this judge as being compromised and corrupt uh, and, and are also intimidated and less likely to convict him. I also think that he is looking to delegitimize the and any conviction he would get by attacking this judge. So he's looking to send a message to the public. He's he's also just I, I think he just can't help himself. But at the end of the day, I don't see the judge recusing himself back in August. He already dealt with this motion of the, uh, ju the d judge's daughter uh, and her employment working for Democratic candidates. Uh, and and it, he already went to a New York State Advisory Committee for the judiciary, which said the fact that she has her political views does not mean anything about whether this judge is impartial. So we've already been down this road. I don't think that's where this will lead. I also don't see him expanding the gag order because it really tracks pretty closely to the gag order that was upheld by the D.C. Court of Appeals. Uh, and that gag order didn't say anything about family members of the judges. It basically, in that opinion, said that the court is fair game and not immune from criticism. And really, this is uh, the daughter part and parcel of arguing that this judge is compromised. So I think what you'll see is an imposition of a condition to his pretrial release, saying that you cannot threaten or incite violence against anyone. And if you violate that pretrial condition, uh, then you are going to get the stiffest sanction that I can impose, and that would include jail time. I mean, again, it's just so dumb for this for this defendant to antagonize judges. He got a $464 million judgment against him the last time he tried it. And now he's antagonizing a judge who could, you know, have his liberty at stake. I mean, next to Easter, he could be looking at reading his, uh, having nothing to do but read his God bless the USA Bible in a prison cell if he keeps this Tim, up. Uh, Tim, on that last point, I, I, I'm sorry, I, I just don't believe it. I don't believe Donald Trump, no, the, none of these judges are going to put this man in jail. I mean, mm. for me, at what point do we say enough is enough? I, I, I'd like to play for you um, uh, sound from Judge Ludic uh, on Trump judicial attacks. So if we just take a listen to this. From the, the first time that, that the former president began uh, his attacks, vicious attacks on the federal courts and the state courts, and their individual judges, um, his objective was to delegitimize those courts so that when and if they ruled against him in the various matters that, that he's uh, been charged with, then 
uh, at least his followers, if not a good part of the, uh, the nation, would dismiss those rulings against him as having been uh, politically inspired and motivated. Tim, this has been the game plan since day one. Every judge that this man has appeared before has known this. Uh, he has twisted the system into knots. In effect, what he's done, and this is to Simone's point, he's put his trials on trial. He's put the whole process on trial. So this just isn't, oh, Donald Trump committed a crime. Let's go through the regular judicial process. This is the entire system is on trial for trying him. Tell me where I'm wrong in this, because, you know, with all due respect uh, to Christie's point, her last point, no judge is going to put Donald Trump in jail for running off his mouth and, and threatening a family member of a judge or a clerk of a judge or a judge himself. I just don't see it, because if they were, they would have done it by now. They had a lot of evidence and reason to do so. Well, never say never, because I think, you know, I do think, Michael, that because Trump is testing the system, the way he is, and because he's so uniquely situated to do it by virtue of two things. One is he's a former president, so he's being, he's being, he's being given a benefit of the doubt that an average citizen wouldn't get. And he's also uniquely unhinged, so he has no remorse or conscience around the things that he's doing. So we'll continue to do it. I think for Judge Mershon to put him in jail for violating a gag order, Judge Mershon needs to have a tighter gag order than the one he issued. The gag order he issued didn't say Trump couldn't go after the judge, couldn't go after the judge's family, couldn't go after the DA. And <clears throat> undoubtedly, he'll go after potential jurors and witnesses. So you, you, that opens the door to other possible crimes, witness intimidation and obstruction of justice. I think Judge Mershon should issue a tighter gag order on Monday. The DA's office has asked him to do that. And if Trump violates it, he should be put in jail. I think the reason there is hesitancy around this isn't simply because the judges are scared of him. I think it's because people are worried about political backlash. They're worried that uh, when Donald Trump posts an image of Joe Biden bound and gagged, held hostage in the back of a truck, if the Secret Service were to show up at, at, at Donald Trump's doorstep for having done that, they work for the Department of Homeland Security, it would be seen as Biden using the levers of the federal government to go after a political opponent. To that, I say, so what? Inevitably, right now, we're at this tension between politics and the rule of law. And the rule laws exist to protect us from our more destructive impulses, our less generous impulses, and our criminal impulses. Mm -hmm. and, and fortunately, most of us don't have the kind of destructive criminal impulses that Donald Trump has, which is an even more of an argument for holding him to account. I share your, I guess, distress and skepticism <laughs> mm -hmm. about how the system is functioning and the breaks he's getting, but I think this is now a challenge to the judiciary and law enforcement to treat him like an average citizen. It's in, it's in front of them all. He's threatening their families as well as the rule of law. I love starting a Sunday morning. We're all violently agreeing <laughs> with each other, right? Um, and of course, it is about just sort of this frustration and the fact that the judges at least have some element of protection. There's also fear about what this means for potential jurors, what this means for witnesses. I mean, this is not contained just to the justices. Okay, well, the gag order protects witnesses, full stop. So, but but as you said, but, they but. don't have they don't have personal security. Um, I mean, maybe some of the, maybe somebody like Michael Cohen does have security, but I, I would expect most of the witnesses that are going to be testifying at this trial do not, and it certainly raises those kinds of concerns. You have to figure over the weekend, if not some point this week. You know, the court administration system, which is dealing with security for Judge Mershon, probably is dealing with some security for his daughter as well, especially with the mm -hmm. photo being uh, put up. So it, it raises all kinds of security concerns. But at least the gag order covers witnesses. It covers jurors. It does not cover the court. It does not cover the DA. And I think the reason why, at least in the D.C. Court of Appeals opinion that dealt with gag orders, it basically said criticism of the court is fair game. Right. Criticism of the DA, this public figure, is fair game. But the question is, it's a fine line. When do we go from criticizing them for being compromised, for being Democrats, to out-and-out threats? And the problem is, when he puts out photos like this yes. in the photo, 
It's an invitation to inflame his base and his followers who take things too far. We saw what happened with Judge Chutkin in D.C. You know, she was threatened with vile, a vile voicemail message with racial slurs and with threat, death threats. And now she's been charged. Uh, that person has been charged criminally. So, again, it, we're going down a very slippery slope here, and you don't ever want to think of where it could lead. I mean, it is... The, uh, Chrissy's last point is spot on. And, I mean, Joyce Vance... Joyce Vance pointed this out, I believe, earlier this week. She she noted that the real problem is how Donald Trump's rhetoric affects the people who do not have abundant security. And this is going to be a trial that will have jurors. And the jurors are watching this play out, which is why I, I'm, I, I share Michael's uh, disdain and disgust and just, like, what the heck is happening here um, and holding Donald Trump accountable. Because the jurors are the potential jurors. Everyone is watching. Watching and looking at this, and if the, and if the judge can't protect his own daughter, if the court is not willing to step in for the judge's That's daughter, true. are they going to step in for me? And then maybe we just need to let this crazy man who used to be the president of the United States of America do what he want to do because I can, I regular citizen out there could not sustain the onslaught that would come from a Donald Trump social media attack. I think about Ruby Freeman and Shea Moss. I was just thinking that. Like yep. it's crazy. Yep. Or, or, you know, Judge Curiel in the, mm. in the Trump University case, mm. yeah. if we want to note how far back this goes. You know, repeatedly during that case, Trump attacked him as being a Mexican, essentially, and therefore untrustworthy as a judge, when, in fact, Judge Curiel was born in the United States. He was of Mexican descent. All of it was irrelevant to uh, both his qualifications and, and wisdom as a judge. But Trump went at him, and that was years ago. He got a huge monetary fine in that case. He got barred from certain businesses in New York. But at the end of the day, he kept doing it. Mm, I, I guess it. the question is, Mom, is when do we say enough is enough? Mm -hmm. That's that's where I am. On this. Well, it's reached a boiling point for me. And I just want to continue to say that if I, I, I just I could only imagine if it was not Donald Trump and it was Donnie Johnson. OK, what would be going on here? Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the app store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.